I believe I am live. Um, YouTube says I'm live. You're live with an exclamation point. Hopefully that is a truth, a truthitude. There's some truthiness in there, I hope. Good Lord, YouTube. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm Mike, and this is my channel, Solid State Alchemy. And as you can see by the shiny wall behind me, I am in my basement. Um... And I'm also in the underbelly of the YouTube algorithm, just doing whatever I please. And what I please today is to have a live stream and just talk about a whole massive range and gamut of crap, honestly. Um, I guess the first thing would be I've seen like a lot of... <laughs> content on YouTube lately talking about like it's a bad time to buy a computer or to build your own computer um, you know for, for this reason or that reason and really the only reason that I've seen in any of the videos and granted I guess there's only there's really like only like two or three videos out there that really make this you know, case that um, you shouldn't buy a computer right now, or you shouldn't build a computer right now. Um, the only one, the only compelling reason to me would be like, you know, if your financial situation is such that, you know, you you may put yourself in a in a um, a place where you have to choose between food or rent or whatever, or the computer you just paid to build. Yeah, that is like. I mean, that's a no-brainer. You know, fiscal stab stability wins that argument every time. You know, you definitely need to take care of yourself uh, and your family and, you know, and prioritize, you know, health and safety and food, your financial well-being, mental well-being, all of those things over any of this, right, over any of, anything that has to do with PCs or PC gaming. Now, for a lot of people, though, you know, PC gaming and its ability to let you kind of detach from the, uh, the real world. Um, where's my, my screen is like the, the, come back. Okay, that's back. Um, kind of let you detach from the real world a little bit. You know, that can be, it can be very good for people to have an outlet, you know, um, whether it's like me, I don't, you know, game too terribly much, honestly, I really, for me, the, the Zen moment is the building, you know, the tinkering, the constant, you know, the overclocking or the, you know, what we're going to do today, the testing, testing of different things, you know, different parameters, um, I, I find, you know, uh, release in that so you know I pursue it uh, gives me some peace of mind um, and also you know <laughs> these days everybody's got a side hustle this is a side hustle for me too you know I, I build computers you can see in the top right of the stream here I think that's top right um, that uh, you know there's a little montage going on and because of the way my streaming setup is right now you know the way my bank account is set up uh, I can't just have the PC in the frame with me, A, because just my setup is wrong, and B, it's um, a Cooler Master Half 922, so um, it would be the entire screen of what I'm dealing with here. It's big boy. Um, actually, you know, it's not, it's really not much bigger than the Lee and Lee Land Cool 2. Um, the Land Cool 2 is a beefy case. None of the reviews, even my review, didn't really talk about that. Like that's a big that's a big son of a gun. Um, I'm getting distracted, you know. Chase two cents over here, but I digress. But yeah, so let's talk about you know, is it a good time or is it a bad time? You know, it's your time. If you need a PC, if you want a PC, if you've got the funds and everything, you know, t is together. You know, now is the time. It's always the time to build a PC if that's what you need, right? Now, granted, you know. There are things that, you know, you just, there's no way 
to be aware of certain, you know, technological advances or certain technology that's on the horizon that won't pan out, you know. Uh, nobody would have, you know, known that Fermi was going to be, you know, just a huge, hot, you know, mess in the GTX 480 that it was, you know, um, prior to. Now, I guess there was some, there were some, uh, some pre-release reviews that said, yeah, this, this GPU is hot. You know, um, Radeon's uh, fi or AT uh, AMD ATI Radeon, whatever you want to call them, their 5000 series of graphics cards, you know, in a lot of instances not worth buying, especially like the 5700 series. Woo, no good, right? I mean, you just never know. You never know if you're going to get a stud or a dud when it comes to, you know, longevity. I mean, nobody has a crystal ball to know. You know, when you bought uh, an RX 480 back in, what was that, 2017, 2016, um, when those were released, you know, you'd have no way of knowing that that was like, that, that Polaris was going to be kind of like a fine wine version 2. And when I say version 2, I always consider the HD 7970 to be the real, the, the OG fine wine. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you can't know everything. You should just build with what with the facts that you have, right? You, you, there's no way to know how how demanding new titles will be or how demanding they won't be. Really, you know, I thought that you know uh, the new Gears Five would be a CPU slayer, and it's not. It's not at all. Um, the four core, four threaded CPU um, is like. You know, the their benchmark says that the i three ninety one hundred F is ninety nine point nine percent GPU bound when paired with an RX fifty seven hundred. So that's that's pretty good. That's you know that's a small, scrappy little CPU and a fairly competent GPU. And yeah, it's not it's not a piece, it's not a CPU slayer. It's no crisis, right? You know, and you just never know, you know, if the next generation of games are going to be that, you know, that CPU slayer. Like Red Dead Redemption 2, it's not really, it doesn't scale um, with CPUs as well as it shows GPU scaling. It's extremely GPU intensive. Woo, it's a, it's a, it's a GPU melter. But, you know, um, in a lot of instances, especially if you are going to run 1440p, you know, CPUs. Um, you know, you can get away with a with a lesser CPU, and there there are there's a lot of value out there right now. Um, I've seen some videos talking about like, man, I just cannot find good deals. You know, I can't find used deals. I can't find anything. Everything's like so expensive because of you know human malware, Voldemort, the pandemic, whatever you know euphemism you want to refer to it as. I've seen some of that. It's not... I think there's some hyperbole there. Um, as you can see, so in the top right-hand corner, there's a little you know, photo montage going on up there of a PC I built um, a couple days ago. I've been test doing some benchmarking on it and whatnot. Um, and that's a... That's a half 922. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big... Old, it's an older, CP, or older PC case. Um... This one's, I guess there was like some kind of revision. I went back and watched some old unboxing videos for the 922. And those show that this case came with USB 2.0 on the front I.O. Uh, I'm pointing at something that you can't see. Uh, awesome. On the front I.O. And that the back panel, which you see right now, and the interior of the case were all aluminum uh, so this one is all black on the back and on the interior and it's got USB 3.0 and an eSATA port which is something that's kind of fallen by the wayside you don't see eSATA ports anymore on um, on uh, front IOs or even on rear motherboard IOs it's pretty rare to see one anymore um, they have their uses 
But yeah, this is a, a fairly dated case. People don't run, you know, a six hard drive RAID array anymore. Um, it's just not something that's commonly done unless you are going to run like some kind of server maybe. I'm not sure. And, you know, and you definitely don't need, let's see, one, two, three, four, I think it's four, maybe, no, five, five, uh, five and a quarter inch uh, bays for different drives. This one's got, uh, one of the, one of the bays is populated with an LG multi-disc, um, I guess that's just like a, I didn't even really look, it just says super multi M disc, it's some kind of CD, DVR, DVD type drive in there. Um, it's connected, but uh, haven't I haven't even checked to see that it actually works yet. So I guess I should test that out before I sell this. But yeah, I put this uh, PC all together um, with uh, it's I'm trying to think. How there is there anything that's new in there? So the the hard drive is new. I like to use new hard drives. Um, it's just good insurance. Uh, from people if if you sell somebody a computer the last thing you want to do is sell them a computer that's you know with a with storage especially if it's the boot drive that's got you know 50,000 hours <laughs> oper operational hours on it or something like that so i usually like to go with e with either a um a brand new storage solution or at least something that i've verified has extremely low operational time and you can use something like um i usually use like c tools for windows or something along those lines to to look and see or crystal disk um I think, I think crystal disk has a utility that will show you um you know how much wear and tear there is on the hard drive um, unless i can verify that prior to purchase i usually go with a new storage solution but everything else you know in this computer is uh used um so we got the half 922, it, um, and inside of there, we've got a gigabyte AX370 gaming K7, um, which if you go on YouTube and look at um, uh, a YouTuber's video, uh, Buildzoid, from actual hard, hardcore overclocking, he reviewed that motherboard very favorably um, for its power section and VRM and overclocking ability. Um, and it's just overall, it feels and looks like an extremely high quality piece. Um, and that motherboard was actually um, new as a, um, what do you call this, as an RMA, um, I guess. So maybe it was, you know, the, the owner, you know, er, er, if you're like, oh, you're saying it's a good motherboard, but it's but the, the previous owner RMA'd it. Hey, look, every single motherboard out there, you know, Every motherboard manufacturer, every motherboard line and model has had a defective motherboard come out of the factory. That's like it's not even an issue that there wasn't there was an RMA, and I got and the person who uh, RMA it didn't want to wait around for the RMA process to play out, and they just went ahead and bought another motherboard. That's extremely common actually, and then just sold the RMA unit that they got back, and I bought it. And got a fairly good deal on that actually for what is an extremely good motherboard you know it supports NVMe N.2 um, supports Crossfire or SLI if you want to do that um, it's got uh, like I said it has an extremely competent power section and VRM um, and it's AM4 and as we're going to explore today um, it supports up to uh, <laughs> some controversy here if you'll look at my other live stream this motherboard should should support up to uh, a Ryzen 3950X so uh, it's currently loaded with a Ryzen 5 1600 AE not the new uh, 12 nanometer this is the original you know 50, uh, 1600 on the 14 nanometer Ryzen uh, Zen architecture the original Zen architecture um, and it's using a Wraith, a stock Wraith Stealth, Wraith, blah, 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 Wraith Stealth cooler, and it's using 16 gigabyte of Oloy. I get, I think I'm saying that right. O L O Y uh, RAM. Uh, it's uh, 3,000 megahertz 
uh, six, uh, DDR4, obviously, and then the GPU is a power color, Red De uh, Red Devil, I almost said Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, no, there's no Red Dead Redemption uh, GPU that I'm aware of. There should be, but there's not. Um, power color, Red Devil, Golden Sample, RX 580, um, which is... In my opinion, man, that that is a that is a really unsung RX 580. Um, that golden sample, uh, as as we're going to see, this thing just, uh, especially in this high airflow case, like I have with this, you know, that's what half stands for. It doesn't stand for like it's half a PC case, like it's little. It stands for high airflow, H A F. And uh, it lives up to its name. So this thing's got a, hun a 200 millimeter fan in the front, and a 200 millimeter side intake fan, uh, blowing straight at that uh, gold, that Red Dragon RX 580. Um, right now, it's loaded with my um, my uh, testing hard drive, which is uh, regrettably uh, a Seasonic, um, uh, not Seasonic, good lord, a Seagate. Um, Fire Cuda. Uh, I don't know if, if you're on my Discord, man. You know that this hard drive is giving me uh, troubles. I have had to zero overwrite this thing, uh, not once but twice. It just keeps crashing. So there is a um, an SSD in the mail, and I'm going to clone this hard drive to the SSD and just use uh, the Seagate as like a, a backup to sit on the shelf. Hopefully, <laughs> that seems not like not a very good plan. Um, actually now that i say that out loud but anyway so that's what's in it right now um and it will have just a one when i when i sell it it'll have a one terabyte hard drive i didn't put an m.2 in there i didn't put an ssd in there um you know i, I try to sell these so that they are extremely accessible uh, i try to sell very very low i i typically uh only you know i put it together i i'm i make my build sheet and I try to sell for maybe 20% over what I paid for it. You know, if, if I get good deals, um, if I get um, really good deals, you know, and I may try to just try to get market value, which could be more like 25 to 30% what I paid for it. But that's pretty rare. Usually I wind up listing it for 20% over what I paid for it and then selling it for less than I listed it at. So I usually make less than 20%. Um, this is not my livelihood. Uh, this is a hobby, but it's a hobby that, you know, I hope pays for itself. And there are people in my area that obviously, you know, they're they're straight flippers and they are trying to like get into people's pockets with some stuff. You know, there's a guy who's selling um, Sandy Bridge, you know, uh, 2000 series uh, Intel uh, PCs with like GT 730s and he puts them in a, a fancy ass RGB puke everywhere case and tries to sell that for like four to five hundred dollars and I'm just like good lord that's that PC and, and then he marks them as new also on Facebook which really you know kind of chaps my ass he marks it as a new PC um, and that's there's the dog I don't know if you heard that he marks those as a new computer on Facebook Marketplace, and that really, you know, bothers me. You know, uh, he's using like a an in, you know a straight, like a Hewlett Packard or something. You know, an HP or IBM or some OEM or SI green board motherboard with a twenty five hundred or you know like a like an i five twenty five hundred K, which is like a, still a pretty competent uh, PC. I actually am going to build two PCs to resale. Uh, with 2500Ks, but I am sure to goodness I am not going to list them for $600 or even $500. You know, they're going to be cheap. Pardon me. When I say entry level and I sell stuff on, on uh, local marketplaces, I mean entry level. Like, I want people to get into this hobby. I don't want people to be locked into... into um, console gaming you know uh i feel like i don't know I, I really do feel like pc gaming is just more robust overall so <clears throat> so that's the build i made oh i didn't talk about the the power supply 
So this power supply is a thermal take tough power 775 watt. Um, that thing's 10 years old, and a lot of people will probably be like, "You son of a gun! How would why why in the world would you always default to uh, new storage solutions, but not put in a new um, a new power supply?" And my response to that is this: a lot of new new power supplies if you go to micro center or you go to amazon or ebay and you buy a new budget power supply you're getting a lesser product than that tough power right there that tough power xt i guarantee it that thing is a freaking tank it's a beast the efficiency might not be as good as like a high-end uh power supply from today and that's okay the only thing that i did to that so i i took that tough power apart you know i i do i always refurb everything everything in this computer i i refurbished i took all the heat sinks off of the vrms on the motherboard and put new um new thermal pads i completely disassembled the gpu put new thermal paste on the on the um, the die the gpu die and put all new thermal pads on the um on the vrm and on the uh the RAM of the um, the GPU, um, and I opened up the lid of the Tough Power um, XT775 from Thermal Take, and I blew it out really good um, with uh, canned air, and wiped down everything. And then I took the fan out of the um, the case. I, I uh, you know removed or uh, uh, totally removed it from the case, and I um, I repacked the fan bearing. Uh, grease and I did that also for both the case fans both the 200 millimeter case fans I disassembled those and repacked the bearings with uh, grease that I get for, for its bicycle grease actually um, it works excellently on um, on case fans it's from a company called Park Tool um, and they're a huge bicycle um, r DIY repair company they sell all kinds of you know tools and everything to help you service b bicycles and uh, i use the grease that you use on your bicycle uh hubs and bottom bracket to grease the um the fan bearings because it's fully synthetic and um and it's long life it's meant to it's meant to hold up it doesn't need to be you know it doesn't need to hold up to like it doesn't need to be automotive grade it doesn't have to you know be around super high heat or there's not high shear or anything like that it just needs to be able to lubricate a shaft inside of a bearing sleeve and yeah it does that flawlessly that is exactly what it's meant to do so um i use that to repack the uh repack the bearings on all the fans the power supply fan and both of the case fans and as long as that power supply fan keeps pushing you know air through that power supply um, I don't think there's going to be any issues and this whole system's consumption should be you know less than 400 watts total so plenty of headroom there it's not going to be super stressed out even when we're running as you'll see, we, we can run uh, the golden sample pretty dang high up there. So now, uh, so that was my, my take on should you buy a PC now? Do you want a PC now? Then the answer is yes. Can you afford a PC now? If the answer is yes, then yes. Yes, you should buy a PC now. You should build a PC now. Now is the time. I understand, yeah. Oh, well, what about Ryzen 3 3100s and B550 and X and, and no support for, you know, Ryzen 4000 on uh, X470 and X370 and all these things and all this, that, and all this, that. If you wait, if you're, if you're waiting for the perfect time, you're never going to build a PC. You're never going to buy a PC. That's, that's the bottom line. There's no, there's no perfect time. There's, I mean, there's no, you know, golden moment. Just get in there. Right, and if it turns out you uh, you made maybe not the best or most informed choices, it's not like it's you know totally uh, unredeemable or an unrectifiable situation, as long as you you know have the financial capability to do that. And look, buying used is a risk. I am not even going to sugarcoat it. I got a pile of dead 
PC parts in the bottom of my uh, storage, one of my storage shelves over here. That's all dead stuff, stuff that either was DOA or worked for a fleeting moment and then died after I bought it, you know, bought it used on either eBay or Craigslist or Facebook or whatever. And it's just a, it's just a thing that happens. Now, granted, hope, for me, thankfully, um, most of that stuff was like really, really, really cheap. Um, I haven't been scammed for a whole bunch of money other than by an eBay scammer one time. And that was when I was the seller. I got scammed as a seller. But I've never been scammed. I've never been really scammed, like hard, hard scammed as a buyer. Um, you know, if you buy a $20 graphics card, you know, you're just, it, it's a gamble. Are you going to, you're either going to get like the deal of the century Maybe if you're if you're paying twenty bucks for like an RX four seventy or something like that, or it's broken and it's not going to work, right? That that's a gamble that you know that's a calculated risk. You got to decide whether or not you can you can withstand the impact of losing that twenty bucks, right? If you pay twenty bucks for a cheap you know super cheap graphics card and it doesn't work, does that mean you have no graphics card? You have no money for an additional graphics card? Well then you're in the wrong hobby. <laughs> no, I mean, you just have, you know, you got to be smart about it, right? Um, then you need to buy new, uh, which will be considerably more than $20. You know, there's no new $20 graphics card. Somebody's going to post a link down below that says, oh, here's a, you know, brand, brand new in box. Um, I don't know, 750 Ti or something. Anyway, um, so that's my take on it. Now is the time. If you want a if you want a computer, buy a computer. If you can afford to wait, and you're happy with the experience that you have now, um, then that's fine. But um, hold on, I'm getting told by YouTube that my stream's current bitrate is lower than the recommended bitrate. And open the widget, they say. Oh, now it says good connection. I don't know. Anyway, I am going to kill the, um, I'm going to kill the slideshow. Oh, we don't need that anymore, I don't think. That was the, um, that was for the intro. Can I kill this slideshow? How well do I know OBS? Um, remove? How does that work? Okay. Am I still streaming? Possibly. See if I can look at myself on my um, on my phone here. You know, technology—it's a thing. So, hopefully, get this figured out here quickly. Um, Okay, I'm still live. All right, cool. All right, that was just a quick check, <laughs> just a quick reality check. Like I said in the description, this will be a long and rambling. I don't really have anywhere to go, and I've got all day to get there kind of a stream. So, yeah, that is my, um, my take on, you know, should you buy a budget or should you build a computer right now? Do you want a computer right now? Can you afford a computer right now? If the answer to both of those things is yes, then the answer to should you build a computer right now is is also yes. I mean, that that's just, you know, it's that easy in my mind. Um, this whole wait and see attitude, or well, what about this processor series, or, you know, don't do anything until the Z490 and the, and the Intel 10 series comes out, 
Or, you know, oh, what about Ampere and the RTX 3000 series and blah, 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 blah. Look, if you're a budget gamer, there's always deals. There's always deals to be had. You can be smart. Figure out which games you like to play. Figure out what your, you know, I always try to, don't don't shoot for the minimum spe recommended specifications for games. Always shoot for the recommended, if you can, if it's in the budget. Look at those games. Uh, look at the recommended specs. Maybe shoot just a little bit above that. You know, if it says, you know, that uh, recommended spec is, uh, I don't know, uh, Radeon HD 7000 series, you should probably you know, definitely, you should definitely try to get an RX 470 or 480 um, or 570, 580, a little bit better clock speed or whatever um, to, to give you a little bit more future-proofness, right? Or 5500 XT if you're going to buy brand new um, or, or GTX uh, 1650 Super. I wouldn't recommend the 1650 um, unless you are just really budget-constrained and you have, uh, you know, all the other components of your PC are going to be very cheap, like the power supply and everything. Um, so, yeah, that was the overview of my budget build. Uh, just to recap, half, 922, and it with a, okay, so let me talk about how I got these components a little bit. Almost all of this was used. I bought the half 922 and the Thermaltake power supply together. Um, from a guy who was selling three um, uh, cases. He uh, was a foreign gentleman, and basically what he was doing was buying PCs for their internals and shipping them back to his family and friends in his uh, native land. Um, but he, wouldn't, he didn't ship the power supplies and cases because of the size and weight. Much easier to ship a processor, motherboard, and RAM, and maybe some GPUs, um, internationally, you're going to pay way, way, way less in shipping um, to get that back to wherever you're from if you're not from the States. Um, and then he just sold the cases and power supplies locally. Um, I bought all three of his cases and power supplies. They were, you know, the, the cases were totally populated with fans, and the power supplies were all in good condition. Actually, all the cases were in phenomenal condition. This half looks like it came out of the box yesterday. It's amazing. It was a little bit dusty when I got it. Once I, you know, a little bit of a buff and polish, and it is just, it, it looks brand new. You know, I mean, it's dated. Don't get me wrong. The style doesn't look brand new, but the actual materials itself, flawless. So I bought all three of his, he was asking $75 per case and with, you know, with the power supply included, and I told him that I would give him 120 for all three, and he took it. So I got uh, all three cases. I got each case and power supply for basically 40 bucks total. In this case, I didn't even notice it when I bought it, but it also had that you know that DVD player in there or uh, CD-ROM or whatever it is. So fully populated with fans. Uh, so two 200 millimeter fans. <laughs> Uh, actually, I guess that's not fully populated. It has room for three 200 millimeter fans, and I actually did buy another 200 millimeter fan because I wasn't 100 percent sure I was going to be able to resurrect the side fan. It was sounding pretty rough, but the the rebuild and I did um, I polished the uh, the 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 fan shaft um, that goes inside the bearing sleeve a little bit, and it it's good. It's good now. It's uh, working working quite well. Um, and then the motherboard was a um, was an eBay grab. I bought that X370 right after X570 launched. So a while ago, I've been sitting on some of these parts for a while, just waiting for a good opportunity to build it all. So yeah, I guess I bought that motherboard last year, um, and I paid less than a hundred for a really nice X370 motherboard. Um, I bought the uh, the Ryzen 5 1600 locally for uh, less than eighty dollars. Uh, I bought the RAM on sale from Newegg. The RAM is brand new um, on a Newegg, you know, uh, what do you call those, doorbusters. And we're going to talk about another, you know, you, gotta, you need to be paying attention if you're going to be on Newegg uh, late at night when you're tired and 
you know, you've had t a couple of tasty libations because uh, I did buy, we're going to talk about uh, one of the premises that we're going to uh, go through in this live stream has to do with not paying attention to what you're buying on Newegg when it's late at night. Whoopsie. So yeah, the Ram was a, a Newegg, uh, uh, what do they call them? Shell shockers? Yeah, a shell shocker. I think it was like, this, I think it wound up being about $65 shipped for a 16 gig, uh, 3000 megahertz uh, RAM kit. And, oh, the um, the GPU. So the GPU actually came out of my son's old rig. So I bought that. Also, I bought this used, but I bought this used in like whoo, March of 2017. I'm, I'm going to say that's right. March of 2017. Maybe 2018. Maybe it was 28. I can't remember. It was either, I know it was for my son's birthday. It was maybe either 2018 or 2017. Um, so I would have bought it, you know, in March before his birthday. So we've had it for at least two years, maybe three. Um, and, and I've gotten my money out of it, right? And I even bought that used at the time. So that was, I think I paid $120 for it. Um, off of eBay, right around there, maybe maybe even a little bit more than that, maybe more like one thirty. Um, but still, that's a really good deal for a golden sample. Um, it, you know, definitely, it performed really well. I didn't know quite as what much of what I'm what I was doing uh, even a couple of years ago, and uh, especially when it came to cases. And unfortunately, we stuck that RX five eighty in. Uh, a Cooler Master Master Light 5. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's got a like a, a plastic, you know, a translucent plastic front panel with almost no ventilation whatsoever. I mean, it, it's got 320 millimeter fans up and down the front of it, and they're all RGB and everything. But that case, its airflow is horrendous. And, um, this GPU is, um, it's a hot one. I mean, it's, it's definitely, uh, gets, um, gets warm. Uh oh, lost my, lost my screen again. Um, yeah, so the golden sample, even though it, you know, what that, what that means is, you know, power color bend the, the GPU chips that are going to go on there for, for ones that have the ability to overclock better than the, um, than maybe their, regular red devils and then definitely better than the red <clears throat> red dragon series right um that's uh, so uh power color they have they have basically three lines of gpus they're just like a straight up power color rx 580 i'm pretty sure they still i know this they do that for the 5700 i think just no no branding really whatsoever other than power color and then there's the power color red dragon which is kind of like their um consumer level um or like you know uh, entry level in uh gaming or enthusiast um tier of card and then there's the red dragon which gets a better overall cooling capacity and i think they probably do bend the chips i know they at least give it a little bit more of a factory overclock um uh, on the Red Dragon series, and then for the RX 580, I guess they they you know they did their bending process and found uh, a considerable number of chips that bend uh, that clocked really high, even though the the heat was an issue. They could they could clock high, but they needed a stronger cooling solution, so they made a, a more robust um, uh, heat pipe cooler uh, assembly for the Red Dragon Golden Sample. In order to get those that subset of chips um, even higher, um, I wanted to look and see. Actually, I don't remember what I was going to look and see. Never mind. Um, yeah, lost my train of thought there. So, so that's the I bought that used. Um, so I, I wasn't doing any mental math there, um, and I don't like to do math in public typically. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, this is not not an expensive computer. This is definitely what I would consider a, a fairly budget-oriented build. If you were to 
get similar deals yourself. You know, definitely get away with building this computer on your own for, you know, and even if you went with a, a lesser motherboard or a less expensive motherboard, you can get X370 or used or B450 motherboards used right now for probably less than 100 Um but this motherboard has kind of a reputation for um, for overclockability, even if Ryzen chips don't don't really have a, a reputation for overclockability. Now, I mean, if if I was like an LN2 dude, or if I had some kind of uh, uh, what do they call that exotic cooling, like if I had a chiller or phase change or something, something, something you know, this would be a motherboard that would um, support that kind of of uh, support that kind of voltage and you know that kind of use case so yeah that, I guess that really sums up you know the, so this is my build it's show and tell and then that, that's my thoughts on should you build a PC right now I know one of the guys on my Discord channel just built a just built a PC for his uh, girlfriend, and it turned out nice. Um, had some, you know, he got some really good deals on some stuff using a Ryzen, not a Ryzen, uh, an Athlon 3000G, which um, I like the Athlon, the current AM4 Athlon series. Um, yeah, they're they're good little chips. They're good little performers. I I did. Uh, just sell a PC that I originally advertised as having an Athlon 200 GE that I had overclocked to 3.825. Um, it wasn't the best sample of an overclocking. That's another thing to talk about, right? Um, so this is bonus bonus content, you guys. Bonus content. So um, that was at least the third Athlon 200 GE uh, computer that I've built and sold here locally. And I typically, I pair that, um, I pair that PC or that CPU with an ASRock motherboard. Um, I'm looking to see if I still have the box for it. I bet I do. Hold on one second. So, yeah, I typically, can I get this in the frame? I'm going to move the microphone here. I typically pair the, um, the Athlon 200G with this guy right here. This is a super, super cheap, pretty much no frills, micro ATX motherboard from ASRock, the B450M HDV Revision 4.0. And as you can, and if you can see on the box right here, it actually says, um, can I get that to come into focus? Athlon 200 series, 200 GE series ready. Um, yes, it supports Athlon 2XX GE series, AMD Raven Ridge 2 ready. It's got Ryzen AMD, Athlon AMD, etc., etc. Um, and that you know, uh, that motherboard's VRM is not the best, for sure. Uh, definitely, you know, I wouldn't feel uh, worried putting a Ryzen or a uh, yeah a Ryzen five thirty six hundred on that. Um, as long as you're not going to overclock it, I feel like that's that's going to be fine, honestly. But that's really about it. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to put. Um, <clears throat> We want to put a 37 or 3800X on there, really, and definitely not a 39 or a 3950X. Just, I just feel like that's maybe a bridge too far. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, but the bonus content of this is so on this ASRock B450 HDV. In order to be able to overclock the Athlon 200G, I have to. I had to on the on the last two that I bought, the last two of these motherboards that I bought, I had to roll back the BIOS 
um, to an earlier version because uh, I don't know, you know, if you were a, a big YouTube tech cons uh, information consumer, you probably heard there was a thing that happened uh, last year when the Athlon chips were, you know, kind of new that um, when they did the initial BIOS um, releases for these chips, uh, ASRock and a few other motherboard manufacturers kind of, I don't know if it's an accident or, or what, um, they released BIOS revisions that allowed you to overclock the Athlon 200 GE um, it, up to being basically the exact same clock speed as the, um, I think it's a 280, 240 GE. I don't remember. I don't know what the, the tiers of, I don't know all the tiers of the, uh, the Athlon 200 series. And it's a moot point now because I think they're into life and they've transitioned basically all over to the 3000 GE, which comes totally unlocked. I don't, I don't understand why they didn't just keep the 200 GE unlocked in all the BIOS revisions. Now, I haven't tried to overclock a, uh, a, uh, a 200 GE on a different motherboard with the latest Agisa code, you know, like a 2020 um, BIOS revision on like a B450 for, you know, like the, I should have tried that, um, like in my land cools, the, um, the MSI, uh, B450 that I have in there. I have an ASRock Gaming B450 K4 um, Fatality um, motherboard over there. Maybe I'll give it a shot. I'll throw an throw a Athlon on that and update the BIOS to the brand newest BIOS I can get for that motherboard. But I know anything past basically the very first BIOS release in on the ASRock uh, homepage for that motherboard or support page for that motherboard that says you know, introduces support for the Athlon APU, that BIOS allows for overclocking. Anything newer than that, no overclocking, which is interesting. And I wondered how many other manufacturers, you know, quote-unquote fixed the, um, the, the, um, the bug or oversight or whatever it was that allowed for Athlon overclocking, Athlon 200 series overclocking. But as far as I know right now, if you're on basically any motherboard with the most recent BIOS revision from any manufacturer, your Athlon 200 GE is back to being um, locked, you know, locked multiplier. You can't overclock it, which sucks because typically when I build computers, I like to update everything, even if it's, you know, like like the, the PC that I have here, the half um, with the Ryzen 5 and the X370, it works fine. You can see, you know, I'm on the, um, I'm on the home screen of this. That that's the computer that you're seeing the home screen of right now. Um, it, it works absolutely fine with the with the Ryzen 5 and the 1600 and a um, a BIOS revision that's from uh, we're gonna see here in a minute. But I think it's 2018. Um, yeah, so that's like not the best. I mean, I, it's fine, actually. I mean, I say it's not the best. It is not the best, you know. So, main board, and it looks like, yeah, uh, March the 15th of 2018. So, over two years old, there have been a slew of BIOS revisions for this particular motherboard since then. I already went to the, um, the motherboard homepage, and uh, I'm going to walk you through, like, gigabytes um, BIOS flash utility and all that good stuff here so um, there we go uh, I wait for somebody to be like wait you're using edge why why are you using edge I don't know man it's just easy okay so we go to the support page and we are on what version are we on? We're on F22. Press F for respects, guys. F. Press it 22 times. Um, CPU support. Nope, nope, that's not what I wanted. Downloads. And BIOS. So this is, what is that? 16. 16 BIOS revisions um, for, for an X370 from... A gigabyte that 
is kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever gone and looked, I mean, if you're uh, like trying to upgrade or update like a system integrator computer or an OEM computer from like HP or an IBM factory build or I don't know, uh, name one, you know, you might have three BIOS revisions, maybe, maybe. It's usually two, um, and that's usually if you're on a chipset that was rolled out when a uh, uh, well, talk, speaking of Intel, particularly if you're on a chipset that was rolled out when a brand new um, CPU line was introduced on a new socket, and then they re introduce a second generation, uh, uh, an additional next generation of CPU that's also on that same socket. Usually, the OEMs will go back and release a BIOS revision that allows you to use both generations of CPU on that motherboard. Usually. Not always. Sometimes. So you usually only get about two BIOS revisions on like a system integrator or an OEM manufacturer, uh, OEM manufacturer, an OE manufacturer um, motherboard. Whereas this DIY consumer motherboard has 16. And that mostly has to do with uh, Ryzen, with Zen Plus release and Ryzen 3 release. So you can see right here, um, we're on F50A. Um, and if we, that's, the, that's the newest one. And the motherboard that we have in this, in this PC is on F22. And let's see, let's see if we can find the one that introduces... Um, introduces third gen Ryzen. Okay, here we go. So F40. F40 is the minimum we have to upgrade to if we want this PC to ever support third generation Ryzen. So 3000 series uh, Ryzen uh, CPU. Um, as it stands right now, it will not support a 2000 series Ryzen CPU. I test tested that with the, um, the Ryzen 3 2300X I have and it will not post with a 2000 series. So um, in order to kind of help the future owner of this computer, um, you know, upgrade, have a more viable and easier to navigate upgrade path, and they don't have to worry about BIOS revisions, at least for the foreseeable future. What we're going to do today on the live stream is we're going to, I'm going to benchmark um, this PC on a couple of maybe like one production benchmark and one game just real fast and we'll see you know how it does and then we'll flash the BIOS and we'll see if that made any change right so um, what I had in mind was just running um, Firestrike and then running um, uh, Cinebench R20 we're just going to run those two. That's all we're going to do just to get like, um, I mean, this is going to be super unscientific. You know, I'm not, it's not going to, we're not going to follow my normal testing methodology of three runs back to back and blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to do a hot take and just see, uh, I might do two runs actually, uh, on this very first one, just so, um, the SSHD gets the files front loaded. I don't want the hard drive to be, um, to be the bottleneck or to, cause us some kind of like um you know uh cause some kind of stutter that makes the this bios look really bad compared to the next one and then the, and then almost no benefit if that's the way it goes i have no idea no idea what's going to happen um if it follows the pattern from the b450 now that's a completely different manufacturer and a completely different chipset and a completely different motherboard but when I did this on a B450 with the Ryzen 3 2300, different CPU too, um, the production workloads got significantly uplifted by the Agisa code um, modernization. Whereas gaming really didn't see um, really didn't see much of a benefit. So I'm going to run uh, Rise of the Tomb Raiders benchmark. Or I'm sorry, not Rise of the Tomb Raider. I'm going to run uh, um, what I say, Fire Strike, just regular old Fire Strike. Um, and then I'm going to run Cinebench R20, and then we're going to um, we're going to download whatever 
you have to do this kind of in phases. You can't go straight from F22 all the way to F50A. If you look, read over here in the comments, it'll say like, hey, please update to X um, level of BIOS before you flash this BIOS, right? So we're gonna have to go through this like maybe twice, I think. I'm gonna run, run it twice. So <laughs> let me find where I put um, Cinebench on this computer. Because honestly, um, you know, I just I just had to rebuild this damn hard drive again. Um, I think I just threw it all in here. Uh, R15. Did I not get? Oh no, I downloaded that straight from the Microsoft Store. So Cinebench R20. So this is Cinebench R20 on a Ryzen 5 1600 OG <laughs> OG. Um, with uh, a two-year-old BIOS running 16 gigabyte of RAM. And the RAM is an XMP. This is XMP RAM setting. And I'll fire that up. And it is also overclocked to 3.5 gigahertz. Nothing crazy. I wasn't going to get nuts on uh, on a Wraith Stealth. That's just uh, asking for a bad time. No voltage. No, nothing. Just there's a little little bit of a bump. A little bit of a bump. Um, I think that takes it like a hundred gigahertz past the boost frequency. I think the boost is three point four on this. Let me check that. Oh, max boost clock of 3.6. So that might actually have... Might have retarded our performance there. See, this was not boosting to 3.6 when I was... Um, when I was working with this yesterday. So right now, we're at 3.5. And I was not not getting 3.6 yesterday, so I'm gonna close this. Yep, that's a misfire. That's okay. I said I was gonna do it twice anyway. Um, so let me go. Let's just shut this down, and then let me go back into the BIOS and just reset it to auto with no overclock. Um, and then I want to. Um, monitor because yesterday um, when I was letting this run on auto with uh, with Cinebench R20 it was not boosting the 3.6 so we might have a gimped processor here and I was not aware of that so um, this may be all for naught let's go ahead fire it back up Spam the delete key. How's my... Okay. There's... Okay. Let me go to advanced frequency settings. So... That's what I didn't do. I'm going to disable core performance boost and I'm going to disable cool and quiet. We're just going to turn the wick up here. 
to 36, let's do 36.5. We'll just do 36 all, all core. We'll do 36 all core. That's the way it's just a running at boost settings all the time. Save and exit setup. Yeesh. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay, so 3.6 all core, no boosting shenanigans. It should just run straight up to 3.6. Um, so now, now we're going to run Cinebench R20 and uh, Fire Strike and see what we get on that setting. Uh, and then we're, I'm not going to change anything else other than the BIOS um, through these. Um, through these uh, tests here, other than the bias. Okay, so back at it. Damn, Daniel, back at it again. All right. Let's just confirm that we're going to get um, Cinebench R20. Yep, 3.6. Okay. All right. If you can hear the the uh, Wraith Spire spooling up in there, it's going pretty good clip there. Got my little notepad here, so I can take notes. Huh, that's what notepads for. So CBR twenty first run. What's our first run going to be? So, what do you think? Is um, is my hypothesis, you know, that um, your BIOS revision, you know, makes a difference um, on your on your uh, performance of your CPU for, especially for Ryzen, is that going to play out for first gen? Um, it definitely seemed to um, definitely seemed to make a difference on um, on second gen, right? Definitely seemed like the farther up in the BIOS tree you got, the more performance you got, sp specifically in the production workloads. Um, like like Cinebench, like I forget what are the ones I, I ran Cinebench R15 and R20, um, a couple of other ones. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do Seven Zip on that one, but um, okay, there we are. We got uh, 2,604 points, and this is on the um, the 2018 BIOS. All right, 2,604 on Cinebench R20. I'm going to close that. Oh, oh. Didn't press the wrong thing. I about closed my stream. Close that. And then we're going to go 3D mark here.
Okay, so while 3D Mark loads, I don't, I don't think that this is going to be um, that we're going to see a significant change in the 3D Mark score um, on uh, on Fire Strike from the BIOS revision. I could be wrong. Uh, we're just going to run standard Fire Strike here. Uh, no demo, please. Thank you. That's what happens when you buy it. You don't have to sit through that long ass demo, man. Wasted a ton of time when we were working on my son's computer, watching the demo load before the actual benchmarks. Super annoying. All right, and now we're gonna watch the golden sample chew through this. I think right now current overclock on the golden sample is 1475 on the core and 2075 on the memory. Um, once you get much up past that on either one of those, it starts to get kind of squirrely. Um, yeah, just a little bit unstable. Just, you know, uh, having it crash in like Apex Legends which was strange. Um, yeah, I know this looks kind of, this probably looks choppy on the stream, and it's just the stream dropping frames. Um, it's not the it's smooth as silk over here on the um, on the PC here. know if my is my stream just breaking up or what um, it says I got good connection but um, yeah it's frustrating it keeps going back and telling me that I I'm ha I have a low bit rate so I don't know what's going on there Not sure why I'm getting such poor connectivity to the stream. Um, I don't know what's going on. My internet connection is fine. says you guys are getting buffering that sucks <laughs> all right so we got uh, 1369 13569 on the uh, the old 3D Mark Fire Strike 13569, which is, uh, I'd say that's pretty commendable for this old beast right here. First gen Ryzen RX 480, fucking 13.5. Yeah, not bad. I'm happy with that. So, okay, so we got our, um, Got our first round of data here. So now 
Um, I want to go to, is this thing, you know what, I didn't check, is if I had any freaking updates. If it was trying to download updates or anything, no, okay, pause updates for seven days, all right. Man, I meant to do that earlier. Um, and then we're going to go back to the Gigabyte website, and we're going to go to the support page and we're going to go to uh, Windows 10 64 bit files okay, it shouldn't matter I don't know why I did that alright so sorry I got my monitor like super far away from here so let me see what I got going on um, I'm on F22 and says to update my chipset driver or the latest version before update this BIOS. So maybe we should do the chipset bot, the chipset driver first. Um, I probably overlooked that. So we're going to download the chipset driver here. Um, AMD chipset driver note when conversion X plus three supported. Note for, for third AMD on CPU support. Um, get the most recent one I mean I hope it doesn't lock out uh, Ryzen first generation uh, the chipset driver also there's uh, so there's a first version which is the original and then there's the uh, one for 1809 um, which I'm not on 1809 I am on 1903 um, and it says it has Athlon 2000 AP support in the chipset driver uh, we don't need that for this motherboard. So we're going to go straight to the, um, the most recent one. Look at that extraction speed. Straight up into it. And... Unknown AM4 CPU type. That's strange. Okay, let's see what this gets us. Sorry for you guys that are out there getting buffering or whatever. Um, my internet connection says it's, you know, it's good. normal latency hopefully this isn't brick anything Telling me I can open a widget. Um, the widget never opens. So that is frustrating. There's no widget. Yeah. See, there's been at least three people look in and see what was going on. So that's nice. But, uh,. Yeah, sorry for the um, for the issues with the latency. 
Not sure what's going on there. Not sure what's going on there. Um, you know, just using my PC to stream or my laptop to stream. Yeah, stream status is poor. OBS is locked up. Well, crap. Oh, no. I'm back. All right. Okay. So. I don't know. I'm not. I'm no um, streaming guru, uh, obviously. So, I'm not sure. Um what is really going on here okay so it looks like the chipset driver installed successfully so that's good and now We'll go back in and we'll download um, uh, one of the BIOS files. Let me grab a. Um, let me grab a thumb drive here. Oh, what do we got? You know, I'm not really sure. What's on these things? Uh, let's see what this one's got on it. So yeah, this is um, this is not going well. Let's see. Well, let's try these on the back port. It doesn't seem like that USB port's working. Uh, okay. USB B oh that is a drive tool we're gonna eject that one. Uh, I got one of these that's just got like a couple of files on here. Probably need to label them, but I never do. Uh, probably don't want this one. It's got my C tools on it. Yep, don't want C tools. Yep. C tools bootable, very useful. Um, and then should be this one. Of course, it's going to be the last. Of course, it's going to be the last one I plug in to the freaking um, PC. Oh no, that's Windows. Well, crap. Um, That's my Windows install media. I guess where I had a cleaner one. Um, we're gonna need to clean. We're gonna need to clean this bad boy off here. Oh, not C boot. Crap. Okay. Open file. Yeah, this is just a bunch of crap that's accumulated on this thing. 
over the last little while. So we're just going to format this bad boy and wipe that booger clean. Yep. Goodbye. Okay. So we're going to format this floppy drive, or this is not floppy drive, this um, thumb drive. Close that. And then we're going to go get ourselves the first BIOS revision that we can update to from F22. Or like the farthest. The one that, before they say, hey, you need this one for something else. So, this is how we'll go about this. We will go to support. And we will go to BIOS. Okay, so we scroll down, we find our BIOS revision. We're on F22 right here. This is us, right? Um, and then we can skip 23. We can skip 25. Um, we can probably skip, see, due to BIOS ROM size limit, no Bristol Ridge. So F30, if you put F30 on here, you can't use an A series APU any longer. Um, so that is something that I talked about, you know, in my rant about AMD's lack of future CPU support for the X370 platform. They've already done this once. I don't know why they uh, refused, you know, to continue this this model. Um, they've already dropped APU support on 370s that are, you know, Bristol Ridge APU support. If you want, if you want. A 2000 series CPU to work on a 370 you can't have uh, Bristol Ridge which anybody who wants a 2000 series CPU is fine with they're fine with it so if I want a 2000 series or a 4000 series CPU on my x370 I would be fine with no Ryzen first gen support that would be okay with me. Okay. Um, we can skip 30 and 31, I think. Okay. If you are using QFlash Utility to update BIOS, make sure you have updated BIOS to F31 before F40. Okay. So that is, I think, the first time I see that message. You must have this BIOS before you can go to this BIOS, right? F30 doesn't say that. It just talks about um, Athlon support, improve USB stability, and you better get this chip dri chipset driver, which is what we just installed. Um, and no A-series or old Athlon X4 series support. So it looks like we can go straight from 22 to 31, right? So, I'm going to download that. And then, I'm going to show in folder. And I'm going to extract all. Extract. And then, Copy that. Put it in this. I think this is the way. Now, this is the way ASRock does their motherboard BIOS updates. I'm going to try doing it this way here. Let's let's just take a look at their uh, driver BIOS. utility. So they have a bunch of utilities here. Um, on off charge, RGB fusion, app center, on internet, easy tune, fast boot, USB blocker, cloud station, cloud station.
So they want you to, to install their app center in order to get the utility. I'm going to pass and I'm going to see if there is a, if there's a, um, should be some kind of utility in BIOS that allows it to find that file and flash it. Um, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, so we're going to let that go completely off there. Another interesting thing about this old Thermaltake uh, power supply is it has, um, it has something that a lot of newer power supplies no longer have, which I all have always kind of liked, is it allows the, um, the fan to spin for like another, you know, uh, 5 to 15 seconds, depending on temperature, um, to, uh, to cool the components after you've powered it off. I like that. I don't know. I feel like that has some merit. All right, we're going to spam the delete key until we get into BIOS. Yep, and then we go to BIOS. So is there no option to, am I just not seeing it? Usually when you go into BIOS, it will show you there. Um, a way to update your BIOS. But I am absolutely failing in this live stream. I guess I should have done my homework. ASRock makes it super easy. What other BIOS did I update recently? No, it must, it must have been doing ASRock. Oh, MSI too. MSI is super easy. Update your um, BIOS right through the BIOS. Like it's just right there in it. Um... Let's look at alt. Oh, there it is. Q flash. I I'm a silly man. Update BIOS. That's the one. And we're away. All right, so we're updating the BIOS now. So yeah, so this is the first, the first BIOS revision that's mentioned in a in a in a succeeding BIOS revision. So we have to do this in kind of like phases, right? So we have to go from 22 to 31, and then 31 will allow us to go past to either 40 or 50A. I'm not sure. I, I, we didn't get that far yet, but this is the first step. So once this BIOS is flashed, then we will run our uh, Cinebench and our um, uh, Firestrike again and see, you know, if there's anything, uh, any kind of improvement. Um, I, don't, I don't think there really will be in, um, in Firestrike, but I would hope to see, like, a few points on um, on uh, Cinebench. So, yeah. I've been down here rambling for like an hour and a half, and I imagine that most of this is like, is buffering, uh, and you really actually are having to like watch me um, in arrears, which is fine. You can watch my rear. That's, that's cool. Um, 
but yeah, it kind of really shuts down the whole, hey, drop me a message on the stream chat, because you can't, because my tr stream is trash. Um, yeah. Really frustrating. If you know how to get YouTube to stream, oh, back to excellent connection. What in the heck? I have no idea. I have no words. Nope, now I'm back to crap. So that's fun. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. Well, I'm just going to keep going and, you know, screaming out into the void uh, all of my crap. So, evidently, I was incorrect. I said earlier uh, in an earlier stream that the AX370 has um, uh, a 32 megabyte ROM, and I, I must have been incorrect. Uh, it says that this file is 16 megabytes or the flash type and size is 16 megabytes so yeah I don't know I still think that there's got to be room in the Agisa code you know if they would uh, I know that some motherboard manufacturers and, and AMD well, AMD recently just released a, the newest of the new Agisa code um, revisions to kind of like clean up a bunch of stuff and chop off some branches and kind of get everything, um, you know, on the code uh, kind of put back into um, into order or what have you. So I don't. What's going on with my? Hmm. I don't know. The streams. I'm having problems. Struggle bus. I'm on the struggle bus. I don't know why, like, half of my, or like a portion of the right hand side of the screen is cut off. Yeah, it looks like the, I don't know, it looks like the, uh, oh, and it rebooted. Hopefully, that's a good sign. Come back. Is it gonna make it? Did I brick the board? Uh, oh, 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 we got a post. Sort of, like a, like a phantom post. Yay, Windows. So happy to see you. So what um, I didn't think about was I I kind of kind of doubt that the overclock setting stuck after the um, uh, the BIOS reflash. No idea. We'll check. We'll check. We'll trust but verify um, that we've got 3.6 gigabyte, giga, gigabytes, good lord. 3.6 uh, gigahertz all core on the little Ryzen 5 that could. Hopefully this is going to, okay, all right, it's coming up. That's just taking a minute. Um, and MSI Afterburner should hold all the GPU settings um, in memory, and we'll just double confirm that we've got XMP um, and... Uh, Um, and our overclock um, still on the on the CPU, and if we do, then we'll get right into it. Let's get to it. Okay, so our um, what do we got here? Our Cinema R twenty was twenty six oh four. Um, I am seeing, I'm seeing 36.99 on some of these cores. Uh, is that right? Is that what we had? Let's go 
Let's see what CPUZ says. Yes. Yes. Um. This is clock multiplier 34. So yeah, it reverted. It reverted back to uh, 3.4, 3.7. I'm just going to go back in there. I'm going to reboot it and go back in and give it an all core 3.7. I'm not sure what AMD thing keeps trying to install. I mean, we have um, we have Radeon installed. Everything is fine. These are the most up-to-date drivers. So, close that. We got MSI Afterburner. Oh, we got Radeon. We got two. No, just one. Okay. Uh, yep. 1475, 2075. Power limit and voltage are maxed out on that bad boy. Okay. So let me go back into the BIOS and um, and reset the overclock to. Um, the boost, whatever the stock boost is um, for this thing, and we will get back at it again, Daniel. I don't know why I've I've referenced that um, I referenced that meme twice in this stream, and I have no idea. I probably haven't referenced that meme once in like two years, and here I am twice in one live stream no idea other than that the other than to say that i'm just strange spamming that delete key oh it's back um Was I looking for here? Yeah. So we're gonna go into advanced frequency settings. Yep. And I had it set at whatever the man. Now I can't remember. Did I set it at three point six or three point seven, guys? I thought I set it at three point six, which is just the boost. Thirty six, just like boosting all the time. And then I went in and I disabled that and disabled that. No cool and quiet, no core performance boost, just 3.6 all the time. And then memory, no, not, not advanced memory settings. Uh, yeah, XMP profile one. That's what we had. To start with, this is what we did the previous setup on. I'm fairly sure I should have should have probably typed up uh, what what I set the overclock to. I'm fairly sure I just had it doing uh, stock. Man, I hope that's right, or this is all going to be garbage. Let me see if I can go back and watch myself on YouTube from my other super secret YouTube channel. It's not super secret. It's just um, do, 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 subscriptions. Look at this old fat guy.
in the description I said it's going to be long and rambling, right? Please set it to 3.6, you crazy fat bastard. So I did, I did, I did what I thought I did, and I just set it to whatever the stock boost frequency is manually. So three point six. Can I remember my? Can I remember my Steam password? Probably not. Here we go. Okay. So let's get into Cinebench. All right. So we've gone from F22 to F31. I forgot to look at um let's look at see what how far apart those things are in like actual chronological order before we run this here. Um, so, F31 was released in May of last year. So, they're over a year apart. Because um, F22 was um, March of 2018, and F31, May of 2019. So, yeah. A year and a month apart from each other. So, how much time? How much difference does a year make on BIOS revisions for Cinebench R20? Let's find out. So, previous score, XMP1 profile enabled, and 3.6 all-core manual overclock with no um, core boost technology and no. Uh, what do you call that? The cool and quiet technology. All that disabled. Just straight up running 3.6. This looks faster. I guess I should have just run them like all auto. The, I imagine the BIOS has the most control if you just run it all auto. We'll go in and run just a straight auto one too on this one before we update to the F40. Man, I feel bad about the stream quality, guys. I don't, you know, I have residential cable. I'm sure, you know, I've got two kids upstairs that are probably playing online video games. <laughs> you know, I got one on Fortnite and one on uh, Warzone probably right now. Uh, and the wife could be streaming Netflix or something on the television. So, you know, unless I go upstairs and incur the wrath of my entire family uh, I really can't do a whole lot about the stream quality dear lord was that oh no 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 
2653. So they did go up. 2653. <laughs> uh, okay. So second time around was 2653. And I mean, that's, that is, I mean, 50. 50 point, 49 points, just call it 50, 49 points is 49 points, um, I'd say that's a win, uh, let's look at 3D mark here, um, some fire striking, fire striking, uh, let's see what this bad boy brings us, previous score was 13, 569, um, and we can go in and look at the uh, the CPU scores uh, when we once this completes, we can open up the my previous results and see what we're getting there. Um, I can show you what the what the a golden sample will do when you really turn the wick up. Um, it you know it's weird. You know you think fire strikes pretty tough to run. It's like, you know it's supposed to be indicative of what a video game kind of load would do on a on a computer right but you know i could i was blasting this core i had it at like 15 25 and 21 25 on the memory and it would complete fire strike but apex legends like said no so it's strange that you know a video game that isn't really like that tough to run um just absolutely wasn't having it with those clock speeds or the gpu wasn't having it um totally unstable did really i wish i had had game capture or relive on or working at that point because it made the <laughs> made the it made for some really weird graphical um anomalies happening on the screen before it crashed and it did just like straight up lock up and crash i tried two or three times to get it to get games to play at 15 25 clock and 21 25 on the memory um it would complete fire strike and fire strike extreme um both times or, or on both uh, on on those settings but it would not play games reliably um yeah, strange. But 1475 and 2075 on uh, on this GPU seems to perform really well. You know, we're clocking at um, you know a solid solid 60s, um, even up in the 70s in some sections of Fire Strike. Um, getting a 13.5, 13,569 on the first pass. Uh, I mean, it's a solid. I think this is a solid PC build. I I actually have zero zero qualms. Very proud to sell this on to somebody, and I'm happy that you know the Cooler Master case isn't gonna wind up in a landfill or you know e-waste recycler, which is basically a landfill right now. Um, yeah. How are we gonna do? What are we gonna What are we gonna pump up to? I'm gonna make thirteen six. Possibly. If that uh if this uh physics score and combined score gets pumped up enough. Usually this um the BIOS update does help the physics score on this benchmark, but it's usually not enough to lift up the overall score. Um, so, we'll see. And the survey says, oh, we went down. We went down, 13,477. Something is going on with the, um, yeah, the drivers. Something about that, um, Man, you know what? We're gonna have to just freaking do a driver. Um, 
we're going to have to go in and, oh, this is what I need to do. AMD Radeon Settings Lite. I need to uninstall that thing. Let's go to uh, Apps. How can I? I need that to go away. Settings light. Yep. Uninstall. Please leave. Please leave. Okay. AMD software is good. All right. Let me. I'm going to. Restart. We're going to run Fire Strike again because I think something was jank after I updated the um, after I updated the chipset driver uh, AMD uh, Radeon settings light kept trying to install and kept being foobarred so uh, I uninstalled that I'm gonna restart the computer um, and run Firestrike one more time trying to make notes here uh, also so this was with um, F31 uh, BIOS revision and we're doing these were all with 3.6 gigahertz all core and XMP one K and what am I doing? Oh yeah, fire strike. We gotta wait for stupid Steam updater to be done with its shenanigans, shenanigans and chicanery. Thirty-one not. mark Let's see what it says why is this doing this yeah, the AMD software is kind of kind of um, having a moment here yeah error AMD installer cannot continue due to missing or corrupted manifest files uh, crap on a stick. Okay, so, so what it sounds like we're going to do is uninstall all of our drivers. What a pain in the ass. Gonna uninstall that too. Sure are. Yes, goodbye. Yep. Guys. Drivers. AMD. Why? Why? Why are you so bad? I don't understand. I don't understand why it's so terrible. Like, this. <laughs> I mean, the RX 580 has been out forever. You've been here forever. Just come on. Fix this shenanigans. Now, maybe some of this has to do with Gigabyte and their um, uh, their motherboard chipset driver. You know, it's got AMD graphic drivers embedded in it because of the, um, the APU support and whatnot. So, I don't know. The chipset driver, like something happened or whatever. Been partially uninstalled. I don't. 
I don't like, no sir, I don't like it. Um, this is super frustrating. So this has happened to me before where the, the chipset driver with the APU support, because it has like embedded um, um, graphic GPU drivers in it, like it's kind of like part of a package that's in the chipset driver package, just totally just jacks your um, your actual Radeon uh, driver setup. So I kind of, what I had to do previously was like uninstall everything and then install the chipset driver and then install regular Radeon or the actual Radeon for the graphics card over top of it. And that seemed to work. Now... What I'm gonna try to do, let's see, let's see if we get the same goofy ass error message um, that Radeon is try, trying to install something and it's um, it's broken. Yep, here it comes. Click here to learn more. Let's see if clicking here helps me learn more. Okay. So it says download the newest drivers. Let's see, do I have them on this? Apologize for the air conditioning noise. Graphics, 5000 series, 500 series, 580, submit, Windows 10. We're going to go with the optional 20.4.2. Point point what a pain in the ass. So hopefully this fixes our issue. Um, no way of knowing, but I, man, I just can't tell you like how frustrating AMD's driver situation is. I don't know if it's, you know, there's a lot of things to, to orchestrate there. Um, when you have motherboard manufacturers who maybe don't update their chipset driver package as often as they should to stay compatible with new releases of the Radeon uh, Gremlin. Um, I don't know. It's tough to say whether it's actually AMD's fault or maybe it's Gigabyte's fault and they need to uh, release a new revision of the chipset driver that doesn't screw up your um, your graphics drivers. Or maybe I should install the chipset driver first and then install graphics drivers over top of it because that's typically what you do so we'll see we'll see if this fixes it otherwise we're gonna you're gonna get to watch me do the um, the uninstall everything and then the DDU uh, clean it all, um, multiple reset, all that kind of shenanigans, which, I mean, I can do if this, if we hit a wall here, um, 
it's just frustrating because I really wanted to be way farther along in the BIOS revision testing um, and see how that panned out. But since uh, obviously the drivers were causing some kind of um, issue with Firestrike, we lost 110 points run to run. Um, that shouldn't happen, not after a BIOS revision. So uh, it's something to do with the the um, the chipset driver. Definitely did something there to the uh, to the graphics. Okay, so this is gonna cycle through and um, hopefully we'll get a, get it installed here in a couple of minutes. So, yep, yeah, I'm sorry you guys are having to, you know, muddle through um, really crap uh, stream, um, actual streaming. I'm not sure what I can do other than go upstairs and yell at all my family to stop using the internet, which um, they will not like. Okay, chugging along, getting these uh, graphics drivers installed here. Man, what in the heck is... going on? Oh, now it says stream health is excellent. Yay! I'm... Not sure that's true. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like we're good. All right. So that's all there. AMD's installed, or Radeon drivers are installed. Hooray. All right. Close that out. Go over here to 3D Mark and run this dang old, dang old, dang old benchmark once MOA. Once MOA. happening on the old discords hmm jam's got his sapphire hd 3850 coming always fun playing with some agp goodness all right benchy marks fire strike once more into the breach so yeah 13.5 was our last score hopefully the graphics drivers are no longer in conflict with each other from the um, from the motherboard chipset driver and the Radeon adrenaline drivers. We'll see what's going on. Yeah, it's interesting, so the, I, I guess it's just my capture device or whatever, but, I mean, it looks super 
super jerky in OBS, like very choppy. And that's definitely the capture device dropping frames um, because this is running at like, you know, 90 frames a second, just 60 to 90, and it's very, very, very smooth. Very smooth um, to watch the, the benchmark go by. So, yeah, um, when you watch this, if you ever watch any part of this live stream, um, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll look kind of jerky, but it's not, it, um, in, in real life. It's the capture card. It's just a cheap mirror box, external capture card. Um, I have it set to, you know, capture at the device input, but I think it, in reality, the best it can actually do is 60 frames a second. So when this is up above 60 frames a second, it actually can't capture all those frames, and it is dropping it. And it makes it look like the video, you know, the GPU is dropping frames, but it's not. It's, it's, the, it's the streaming. Low budget. What you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Now, to me, this is the, this is the test where you're like, you know, coming from what, you know, uh, <laughs> the gaming, the only gaming PC we had in the house for a while was my son's, and it was a an Athlon X4 uh, 860K. So <laughs> quad core is actually, I think, after the lawsuit, it would technically be a, a dual core with two compute units per core or something like that. Um, but uh, <clears throat> that was the CPU that was coupled with this. Um, RX 580 and we struggled to get that computer to score in the 8000s on uh, on this exact same benchmark so watching those uh, squiddy things or whatever they are go by at 50 plus frames a second when that old Athlon god that thing I mean it could barely it was in the, the 12 to 15 frames a second range on the physics score now, on the combined score, we are back down to like 23 uh, frames a second. So, still, I mean, that old Athlon was just not even close. Wow, we went down again. That's surprising. 13057. But we have a valid score this time. Strange. Strange and stranger. So, let's go into the um, compare the results and see what's going on here. Is this some kind of like graphics card? hiccup that I'm getting um, and uh, I didn't have MSI Afterburner oh yeah it still captured it so MSI Afterburner GPU temperature we're looking like in the 50s very very stable uh, GPU temperatures um, memory usage is fine core clocks So the core is only getting to 1425, which I'm not sure why that is, um, because I've got it set to 1475. Uh, that's interesting. So we're not getting our full overclock. I'm not sure why that's happening. The temperatures are really low, because um, it is it is cold down here. Um, let me boom this out some. The temperatures are really low. The core clock is 50 megahertz off of what it's set to in MSI Afterburner, which is strange. Um, I'm not sure why it's not boosting up to what it's set at. Um, yeah, and we're only getting 2,000 on the memory. Um, again, strange. Uh... CPU temperatures also look good. We got a peak of 63 there. Um, CPU usage, yeah, 63 happened on the um, physics. CPU clocks, deadpan 36 all the way across. Um, RAM usage is pretty low. We definitely could get, we could skate by with eight gigabytes at least for this particular application. Frame rate. So I'm not sure what is going on with the um, 
um, with the clock speed here. That's uh, concerning that um, we're not getting the um, we're not getting the the boost because if we go into my results here, so this is the first one we did of the day, 13,569. And then we went down another 100 points. I wish I'd looked at the clock speeds on both of these runs. This seemed very much, uh, we're still down a little bit off of our high. Now this was done at, um, this was done with the wick turned way up. I had this, this is when I had it clocked at 1525 with uh, 2125 on the memory. Um, yeah. So this one you can see uh, 1317 um, or 1535. Yeah, 1535 and 2160 on the memory. Um, and we were hitting the 3.7 turbo core clock. That was a uh, day before yesterday. And then on this one here, we went in and we hit, yeah, we were hitting 1475 and 2075 on that one. And then this most recent one of 13 flat, yeah, 1425 and 2000. Hmm. So what's going on there? Is the GPU starting to degrade? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. Are we watching the uh, the GPU lose its marbles? It's really cool. It's definitely not um, not overheating. So, what can we do here? So we didn't get above fourteen twenty-five, and we didn't get above. 2000. So set this at 1400. And this at 2000. And then I'm going to go to benchmarks again and just run a custom run of just the first graphics test. That'll be quick. So this is interesting. This I was not expecting uh, to run into this particular issue on this um, uh, on this graphics card. Now I wonder. So previously, at least. For the very first run we did today, for sure, I had, I didn't have the beta. I didn't have the optional driver, actually. I had the, I had the, um, the recommended, which is one less, not one back. So, this is showing 1,400 and 2,000 locked in, no issues. 42, 44 degrees in the CPU, you know, like really good, um, really good temps, no problems, flying through this, boom, completes that, no problem. Okay. Um, So let's do 1425 and 2025. Yeah, this is weird. Um, custom run. Yep. Just going to run that one again. Let's see if we can get our clocks back up and then. You know, maybe I will just have to go back to the drawing board and I'm probably going to wrap this stream up and we may never know the answer to does um, a Ryzen BIOS flash 
if you do it in the right order, I guess there's some takeaways here, right? Um, I should have worked out the kinks with the motherboard chipset driver before attempting to do this and maybe like then possibly the conflicts with um, with uh, graphics drivers. So that's just something, you know, um, for everybody to be aware of. Uh, drivers are drivers are like, you know, your angry, angry friend who's just always looking for a fight, looking for conflict. Drivers just walk around looking for other drivers to conflict with. I feel like that's true, right? So, um, yeah, if you, um, we're hitting 1425, 2025, no problem right now. Um, if you are going to be doing driver updates or whatever in the middle of your um, testing, just be prepared for uh, some con some conflicts. So, yeah, we hit 2025 in that one. And... core clock of 1425 now let's see if we'll hit 1450 and 2050 lock that in because it wouldn't let me hit those numbers just a couple of runs ago so let's run that And I wasn't really paying attention to the MSI overlay on the top left. I guess I should have been when I was running these because, yeah, we were definitely, um, after we did that gra the uh, driver update, um, it knocked us down um, off of my previous overclocks. Even though MSI Afterburner showed um, that I I had those, after, uh, those uh, uh, overclocks applied, so it may be a conflict. Again, drivers just run around looking for somebody to fight with. So it could be, yeah, 1450, 2050. So I don't know. Uh, that's strange. Um, it could just be that, you know, when we updated, the I had to, like, kind of walk it back up and convince the Adrenaline 2020 driver that, yes, yes, this is fine. Everything is fine. This graphics card will absolutely do 1475 and 2075. But that's what we had at the beginning of the stream uh, when I started the um, process of trying to do... This is this is what it takes to just do one BIOS update, right? Um, so, yep, this reports. We got 1450 there, 1425 there, 1400 there. So we are going up. And 2050 there, 2025 there, 2000 there. Okay. So let's see if we can get back to my original 1475 and 2075. Number. Okay. So that's in there. Let's do one more shorty custom run. And see if that will hold. And then if it holds, then we'll run the full thing. And then we can see if we legit got any kind of benefit from the um, um, from the BIOS update. I've never had a a Radeon driver update knock down the yep 1475 2075 that's weird i've never had it conflict with msi afterburner like that strange strange okay so we're back in it um all right so this is what i had it set at <clears throat> for the very first run i do believe 1475 and 2075 sounds sounds possible um and then, so we're going to run this straight through on the benchmark. And then I'm being told that um, my assistance is required upstairs in the rest of the household. So we'll probably have to go do that. Um, all right, one full run of Firestrike. 
So we know based off of the just the um, the BIOS revision, even with a manual overclock applied, that we got 50 points in um, in Cinebench R20. And there's probably a little bit of testing methodology flaw there. I probably should have let it just do straight up auto um, and let the motherboard kind of dictate what the chipset chip with the CPU was going to do there. Um, yeah, that would have been a better test, you know. Nah. It's frustrating. I should have thought that through a little bit better. But um, what I can do before we roll forward from F31 to the next one is I can go in and just set it all to, you know, default settings um, and do uh, a test with default settings in F31, which is the one we're on now, and then the test with default settings on F40, which is the next one we're going to bump up to um, and see what that nets us if it nets us anything. Um, I th yeah. Yeah. And then, I, I mean, I can go back in and do the manual overclock, too. On F40. That's easy. Alright, so we are back up to 1475, 2075. So strange. So strange. It's like I had to convince the Radeon driver that, no, no. This overclock is totally fine, guys. It's, it's cool. It's cool. He's with me. Uh, yeah. And my stream is still stuck in Suckland. It's just absolutely... Oh, now it says it's good. For like two seconds it said it was good. No idea. So I've ranted and raved in a previous stream about, you know, AMD no longer supporting uh, or, or not, you know, supporting the forward um, compatibility of X370 and 470 motherboards at a minimum and even B350 and B450 motherboards forward um, for the 4000 series chip. And I guess this is kind of like a validation of why they would not do that because you know if you're a motherboard owner if you're an x370 motherboard owner and you have a first gen ryzen chip on there you know um a lot of people will tell you hey if your bios is okay if your pc runs fine now don't update i don't particularly uh adhere to that um that you know ideology because as you've seen in a previous video that I made and also in the stream you can actually pick up compute performance in um, okay so yeah 13463 so we're like we're kind of like back in the realm of you know these are all just within spitting distance of each other um, actually results so let's go back and compare my results here um okay so let's what in the heck happened there oh those were all my little let's delete that uh delete that delete that and delete that okay so our first run of the day on the old F22 BIOS was actually our best score 13569 and um, then two uh, two runs on F31 with weird driver issues finally cleared up and went actually this one so 13477 was running at Oh, that was running at 470, yeah, 1475 and 2075. Um, and then, but that one had the weird driver conflict and it couldn't validate the, the score. And then 14, uh, 13463 
which is what are we looking at? Uh, 